All right, what is going on Adobe Live? Welcome back, hanging out with us yet again. We have not only an amazing day or segment ready for you guys today, but also tomorrow with Miss Elsa Amory. What's going on, Elsa? How are you doing? Hey, Brandon. I'm doing really good. How about you? I'm excellent. Now, before I hand you the mic fully, I have to let you guys know, for those of you who are on YouTube, you do not want to miss out an amazing conversation that we're having here on Behance. So definitely with the moderator dropping the links, come over and chat with us over on, or really with the Behance fam. So with that said, you know, a little bit about Elsa. I'm not gonna steal all her thunder, but listen, she is not a stranger to the Adobe family. She's an Adobe XD ambassador. She is from an amazing UI UX designer from Tanzania. And uh, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna let her do herself due diligence. So with that said, uh, Elsa, what are we here to do? And let's tell us, tell the audience a little bit about you. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'll save what we're going to do for a bit later. Actually, let me just give it like a brief recap. Um, we're going to be designing a mobile app for sharing live video content. And we're also going to try and combine social elements as well. So it's a bit of both super exciting stuff. Um, but like Brandon said, I should probably introduce myself for anyone who wasn't here last time I was on Adobe Live. And just for people who kind of want to learn more about me. So I created this like really quick presentation in XD that I'm going to go through. Um, and just to introduce myself, my name's Elsa. I'm a visual designer. And like Brandon said, I'm from Tanzania. I do have a passion for pastel colors and sans serif fonts and ease out animations, but that's like a small part of who I am. <laughs> like just a couple things that I really do like. Um, I've been working as a designer for just over a year professionally. And prior to that, I did a lot of design work in my own time. So more so as a hobby. And I also work as a visual designer. So I kind of do a bit of everything. I do graphic design and also web and app design. This year, I also got into 3D design. So I'm kind of like, I can't get enough in terms of learning different types of design um, careers and design hobbies as well. So like a bit of my um, path to get to where I am right now. So just to go through it quickly for anyone who's interested, I graduated from the University of Leeds and I studied media and communication and that was in 2018. And then I spent a year working as an English teacher in Japan, which is kind of like really different from what I studied, but I didn't know what I wanted to do at that point in time. So I figured why not spend a year in Japan, which I really wanted to visit and do something different and kind of just figure things out for myself. And it actually really worked out pretty well because during that year, I spent a lot of time participating in the Adobe XD daily challenges. And those were really good for me because it kind of helped me feel much more motivated in terms of pursuing a career as a designer. Like there's something really positive about getting positive comments from people who are more experienced than yourself saying, oh, your work is really good. Like it really boosts your self-esteem. And so that's what it did for me. And then after I was done with my gig in Japan, I came back home and I started working as a designer. So initially I started out in the graphic design route and I worked as a junior art director at an agency here. And up until now, most recently, I actually finished a postgraduate course in UX design. I know the last time I did the live, I was still doing the course. Well, now I'm kind of done with that. And I work full-time as a freelance visual designer with with different clients, both locally and internationally. So like I said, I do a lot of different types of design work. So on the left is one of my first case studies and probably one of my favorite case studies. I redesigned the Last FM Android app. And so that was just a super cool project. And I really liked the final outcome that I ended up with. And then on the right, I have an example of like more visual design work that I do. So for, the, for this instance, I was rebranding um, a client's essential visual identity. So we did logo, we did colors, we did typography, social media, just pretty much everything. So that was also really fun project and I really liked the final outcome we had as well. I do a lot of design in my free time, so like non-work related too. So these are a couple of samples of designs that I've come up with this year. The one on the left, I actually did as part of a challenge that Brandon hosted. I can't remember what the challenge was called, but I know that we had the opportunity to design something in like a limited amount of time. So something video game related, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And this is yeah. kind of what I yeah, coming up with. So that was super fun. Um, really great experience. And then all these other examples are just kind of random designs I've done here and there, mostly for fun, sometimes as part of weekly challenges. But I like to kind of just practice my skills when I can. 
And yeah, outside of design, like who am I? Am I just a designer? Not really. Like I like to do a bunch of things when I'm not designing. So I like board games. I like card games. I like anime. I like reading crime fiction novels and horror novels. Those are my favorite genres. And then of course, travel, which is really limited now. But before the pandemic, I did like traveling a lot. So these are like two pictures from when I spent the year in Japan. Some of my favorites that I wanted to share. And yeah, so that was kind of like a really quick run through of who I am. And these are some of my social media um, platforms that you can connect with me on. But yeah, that's just a bit about me. I yeah. love it, Elsa. So with that said, basically, that's just telling us that uh, we have somebody with some master level of knowledge with here with us here today. So I'm super excited for you to just tell us a little bit about um, what we're going to dive into. Yeah, of course. So I'm super excited for this live stream. Like I mentioned before, we're going to be designing a mobile app for sharing live video content. So think TikTok, really. TikTok is the main inspiration for what we're going to be designing today and also like a bit of Instagram as well. But we'll see as we go along. And this is kind of our outline for day one. So we kind of have a couple of things on our checklist. We're going to talk a bit more about what our design focus is, so what the objectives are. Um, and then I created like a mini style guide that I want to fill out today as we go along, mostly with typography and colors. Those are the two things we're going to stick with. Also to show you how you can create your own mini style guide in XD and use document assets to kind of streamline your design process. And then, of course, we're going to start working on our designs and hopefully finish them. Um, and tomorrow we'll go into what we're going to be doing tomorrow when we actually get to tomorrow. So to get started, I've arranged all my artboards like super neatly. We have our objectives. So just to kind of um, break it up in terms of what we're aiming to do during today and tomorrow. So we want to design a mobile app that allows users to upload or stream live video content. Like I said, similar to um, TikTok, where you can kind of share video content or even similar to like Instagram or like Snapchat, where you can share more live type content. So think of apps of that nature. We're going to be creating something a bit similar to that. One of the key things we want to do is incorporate video content and Lottie animations. So I'm sure we all know by now, or at least most of us know by now, XD's last major update allowed us to now incorporate videos and Lottie animations in XD, so in our designs, which is obviously really awesome and something that I'm super glad that they kind of added to the platform. So we're going to just be going through how you can incorporate those two different things in your designs. And then, of course, we want to make sure that we have time to prototype. So how can you prototype interactions between screens and just show a bit of animation and a bit more style in what you've made? So in terms of our target audience for like who we're designing for, so if we're thinking of apps like TikTok or similar social media type apps, we're trying to targeting teens or young adults, maybe even younger than teens. I know a lot of really, really young people you know, are now getting a head start on using apps like TikTok. So maybe even younger, or maybe even just like tech savvy individuals who are avid, avid social media users or, or who like creating video content, who are good at creating video content, that type of audience. So that's really what we are aiming for in terms of our target audience. And going in to our mood board. So I created a mood board here before I wanted to get started on designing because it helps to kind of just get a bit more inspiration from like what other people have made in terms of colors, in terms of style and layout and structure. I usually go to like Dribble or Behance when I'm looking for inspiration from my designs. Those are my two main um, inspo sources. There's also um, Pinterest. I think that's also a really good one as well for getting kind of like inspiration when it comes to your design. But most of these I got from Dribble. So just a couple of different concepts that I want to refer to when we're designing to get a couple of ideas. You'll notice that a lot of them kind of incorporate rounded rectangles or rounded squares. That's very much my thing. So I already know that that's something that I want to include as well. I'm a big fan of rounded shapes. I'm not a big fan of like sharp edges or anything like that. Um, and yeah, just in terms of like colors as well, I really like the use of bright colors in some of these. So for example, this really nice bright blue here or these bright pinks as well. So I'm also kind of just in my mind already thinking that I wanna incorporate some of those color choices in the design we create as well. But yeah, so this is just the mood board we're gonna be using and we'll come and like reference it throughout our entire process today and tomorrow. 
And as I mentioned previously, we have our style guide. So a style guide is essentially something that you can create to help document what your main assets are for your designs. So it can be typography, it can be colors, it can be components, whatever it is that you are including that's going to be consistently used throughout your design. So for this style guide that I made, it's a mini one. So just something basic for the sake of this um, live stream. So I only have like two sections, typography and colors. And I've already started adding to them. So for typography, I have a large heading, which I think I've set to like 22 pixels. And the font that we're going with is Lato. That's one of my favorite sans serif fonts. So it's the one that I've kind of already decided I wanted to use for this design. And this is kind of what I want to use for my large headings, but I might adjust that later. And then in terms of colors, all I've got so far is just a grayscale palette because grays, um, shades of black and shades of white are commonly used in designs regardless of what your main colors are. So I kind of just already added them here um, as a reference point. And then moving forward, I've actually already set up some of my wireframes. So these are some of the key screens that I want to work with. And of course, if we kind of just breeze through them, we can come up with a couple more screens. So I kind of just created a couple wireframes for them. And I am going to start working on the design. I'm going to focus more on like layout and how it looks and then go back and figure out colors and all that a bit later on. So we'll get started on designing because I think I did a really long intro, but hopefully <laughs> all on the same page now <laughs> they were very ready for that all the comments are essentially first off they're saying hi elsa and hello everybody else oh. and they are loving your mood board that was very well I, first off we want to know how long that took you to really put together all those things um or all those things that you kind of had in your back pocket for us Oh, um, I wouldn't say too long. Like the mood board probably took me like half an hour. It's really just as simple as Googling, okay, TikTok app UI. And you get like so many um, different concepts that people have done or like live video app UI. So that didn't take long at all. But I'm really thankful that so many people liked it. That, that means a lot. Okay, so right now I'm just adding a bit more to my typography style guide. So in document assets in XD, you can save um, different styles for character style, colors, etc. So I already have my large heading, so I'm probably just going to start saving that. Bold and regular, because I'm only using two font weights this time around. And then, yeah, let me add, I think I'm going to have a small heading too, which is 18 pixels. So I'm just going to click both of these and add them to my character styles as well. And then let me come up with like a couple more smaller options. Cause I have like designed a lot of app concepts before. I have a general idea of what type of sizes I normally work with. Um, but of course we can always kind of come back and adjust this later on as well. Very nice. I like the fact, I feel like every designer, when they start out being super organized, I feel like every Adobe Live where we've done this, it's just gone super smooth, super quick because you guys have done a lot of the work up front and we're really just puzzle piecing things together. You guys have done a lot of the upfront work and we're excited to see the magic just come together. Yeah, definitely. Because I also think like the planning sometimes can catch you off guard and take a lot of time. <laughs> so in order to avoid that, it helps to kind of just have a bit of knowledge of what you want to do, kind of do all the maybe boring background research and get that all out of the way. That way you do the fun stuff when you're live. Agreed. Um, okay, I have my large heading, small heading, large paragraph, small paragraph. I might do one more as well. Typically, how many paragraphs or styling do you use with your uh, design work? Oh, a lot. Um, yeah, I would say a lot more than this. I think right now I'm probably going to stick with one, two, three, four, five, six, five or six, just because I kind of know myself and I know some of the different discrepancies I have. Like I, I'm not the type of person who can just make do with a couple of different styles. I kind of yeah. want to make sure that whatever looks good on my design is what I work with. So I like to kind of give myself more than I need. But for mobile designs, I would say 
Yeah, I would say like sticking to around six this time around works also because we're not designing a lot of screens. So it, it doesn't necessarily make sense to have a lot of different character styles either. That makes sense. I actually I find it really interesting uh, for the designers who actually use that many because I get lost very quickly. I'm somebody who has to keep it simple or not at all. So I, I'm very fascinated and love to actually work with and have the, you know, watch people work who do the yeah. things that I necessarily can't because it's the work and the process that um, I wouldn't necessarily naturally go towards. So I hope you guys in the chat are super. The next two days, like I said, we have a treat. <laughs> Exactly. So I've just added my grayscale as well to my assets. That way I also have that here. Um, also a super cool thing XD did or introduced like a while ago, I think. Um, you can group your assets. So if I selected, let's say, all of these colors that I've just added, oh, I've already grouped them and you could just select them and say new group from selection and you can create a new group. And that's really helpful. So when we do add more color palettes, here in different color shades as well it's really helpful to have them in groups as opposed to just in one really long column so just a tip as well okay i think that is done with my colors and typography so moving forward to the design so we're going to start out with the profile page so what somebody would see when they are on their own um, user profile. The app doesn't have a name. I don't know if it will be named by the end of tomorrow, but if anyone does have names, feel free to recommend some. We are totally willing. That's the first assignment, guys. All right, chat. <laughs> assignment number one, naming the application. <laughs> do we have exactly. any, to, do we have any uh, brain farts to go off of Elsa? Do, do we want to kind of give them some things to chew on and then maybe they can come up with uh, some alternatives? Oh, yeah. I kind of really like the idea of making it something like not directly related to the content. Like if we think TikTok, like if yeah. I heard the name TikTok, I wouldn't automatically think live video. So something like that, where it's kind of a bit bizarre and kooky, but I think that also stands out a bit more. Uh, I thought you said bizarre and pooky. I was like, I've never heard that as a description. And then I was like, oh, kooky, <laughs> which makes a lot more sense. But if you guys want a a, a pooky name, um, I'm down for that too. I'm not, that's in my court, but you know, Elsa's designing here. So she'll have the final vote. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm actually going to turn on my grid because it's just a lot easier to design with it. Um, kind of gives you reference points for how you want to size things. Um, and I did that using a shortcut. I, I just realized I didn't mention it. Shift command and the, uh, what, what key is this? The quote key, I guess it's called on Mac. And that's the shortcut for turning your grids on and off. Now with grids, I'm actually really curious because I think everybody does this really differently. Do you set up your own grids where you're like, I know specifically, uh, customly what I kind of want to go for? Or do you just hit that button or that shortcut and you're like, perfect. I have a road to walk on. <laughs> how, how, how exactly do you do it? Um, no, actually, I use um, a different kind of template. So for instance, I got this from the apple template or apple style guide that xd provides for you so it mm. comes with the grids ready made so i've kind of just used that but sometimes i think more so for like website design projects i would use a custom grid but for app design i don't typically use custom ones got it and it's just always easier you know if you have a template use it you get to use your brain power and other things yeah so now I'm just creating a menu icon because I don't really like the ones that were I use icons for design as a plugin for looking for icons it typically is my go-to but I don't really like the menu icons that they have so I'm just gonna create one specifically for this we got to improvise sometimes. Sometimes, you know, icons for design sets us up really well, especially if we don't have to go uh, typing away on the internet. But, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I do think I like this more. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. Okay. 
And out of awesome. curiosity, we do have some newcomers in the chat. Some people are new to XD, some are not. Um, so definitely, if you guys are new, listen, like I said, we have Elsie here today, tomorrow. So if you have any questions, she obviously, being an Adobe XD ambassador and just also an amazing UI UX designer, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. We're here to watch a master at work, but also to ask questions and learn. Yeah, definitely. Any questions you may have, we would totally love to answer. Okay, so I have my name and username. I'm going to place that here. Sorry, you know what font I'm using? I'm using Lato. And for the name, I'm going to go with my large heading. So oh, what name are we going with? I don't know why. Okay, the first name that's coming into my head is Audrey Hepburn. So, okay, this is Audrey Hepburn's account. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> and then username, I'm going to go with the smaller heading or maybe even smaller than that actually so username will just be let's say audrey xox oh oh whoops okay awesome and then i actually want to i didn't have this in my wireframe but i actually want to add another section for like a brief bio. So if somebody were writing a bio for their profile and adding that here, so mm. let me just use that here. And I'm gonna make this a bit smaller, so 14. Yep, size 14 works. Okay, in terms of what I always kind of put lorem ipsum, but I've read recently that it's better to use actual text. So I'm going to practice using actual text in my design as if it was a real thing. So, hey, everyone, <laughs> I'm making the fly. <laughs> uh, if anyone has like feedback on like what I should change, because this does not sound like a real person at all, please let me know. We're creating a, uh, what do they call them? Uh, a VTuber or, or, or a virtual person. There we go. Yeah, that's virtual what influencer. <laughs> what were you reading about the uh, the text and lorem ipsum? I just I'm, I'm so used to dropping lorem ipsum in there because I, I design quick and dirty. Um, mm -hmm. I because usually I'm I'm doing the visual side of things, but from I'm assuming. Yeah. And you have to tell the, the audience, this is a, a learning moment for all of us. Uh, yeah. What did you learn about lorem ipsum versus real text? Um, so like specifically, it was more just general advice in that when you are showcasing your design, so if you're designing something, then presenting it on whatever public platform that you're choosing mm -hmm. to do so on, it just helps if your text is real text. So instead of someone looking at your di design and appreciating the visual, so it looks really nice, they also get more of a real life experience from it because the text is also what you would see if the app were a real thing. So if I'm re looking at this and and this is going to be a lot easier to illustrate when we're actually done. But if I'm reading this and I'm seeing an image of this particular screen and I've showed it on Behance or in Dribbble, what the person was saying is that it's better if the user or the viewer is looking at it and they can actually see see like real text as opposed True. to just seeing a lot of lorem ipsum. So like Jane Doe, uh, Jane Doe, lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum. It kind of it takes away from the experiences, I guess, what they were trying to say. So yeah. I kind of just decided to start practicing. It may as well. I think th there's definitely something to that because when I see Lorem Ipsum, I'm like, can't read it, have no idea what it is. I already have trouble reading books. That's why we go audible. audible. But um, <laughs> definitely, yes, I, I I agree. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt to practice. It might, it might kind of help you become a better UX writer if you know that's a career path you might want to pursue for anyone who's watching. So it doesn't hurt to practice. Um, so I've got like my little blurb here for the person. And now I'm just going to add like key figures related to their profile. So like maybe how many videos they have, how many followers they have, and how many people they're following. I think just those three for now. Um, okay. I'm not going to lie. This is one thing when I have tried to recreate 
social media apps, the three big following followers and then posts always stress me out because I'm like, okay, <laughs> where do I, uh, I'm like trying to configure where the things fit. Um, it, it's always a fight. I don't know. Do you feel the same? Or it looks like you have a pretty good strategy here, which is first off, you, you have some good grids in place. Yeah, no, that's a struggle for me as well, especially because we have quite a few elements here. So we have the profile picture, we have the name, the username, you know, you might argue, why do I need both? But well, I decided to include yeah. both. And then you have the bio and then, of course, the figures and then a follow button. So it's a lot of different elements and it's kind of hard. You're like, what should go first? What do we want to prioritize? And it might be a different answer for different people. So it's a lot mm -hmm. of trial and error for sure. It is, it is a challenging thing got to get your hands dirty see what works mm -hmm. yeah and we might like go back and change it once we do a couple more screens i find that i do that a lot i'll like make something and i'll be like yep this looks good and then i'll come back to it the next day like this is awful i need to change it and do it all over again so we might end up changing it who knows um this is good let me just group these. Yep. And then I think I'm going to add like a line, a divider in between them. I don't know why. I just feel like maybe it kind of looks a bit better. So I'm going to go with a really pale line. Let me try E6, E6. And out of curiosity, why did you pick this mm -hmm. for uh, TikTok inspiration for today? Um, I think it was because I really wanted to use um, video content and Lottie animations. And the first thing I could think of that would allow me to do that quite a bit is going for like a video type app. And the most popular video type app is TikTok. I think, I believe it is TikTok these days. So I, that was just kind of what I went with. Although I haven't used TikTok before, so I guess that's still a, a bit of weird. Okay. Awesome. Okay, I think I like how that looks. So far, every section seems to be going well. Oh. Forty. And so for the chat, I want to know, do you guys, when it comes to redesign, it just this is just out of curiosity. How often do you guys do projects for yourself? I feel like even anytime that I'm on Adobe Live, I just love the fact that we get to see uh, people like Elsa, you know, just go at projects that they decided to recreate live in front of us as an audience. But how often do you guys create personal projects? How often do you guys practice? I would love to know. Yeah, same here. I'm really curious because I feel like I don't do it enough, which is strange, but I'm curious how often other people do. Exactly. Before that, I have to shout, shout this comment out the, uh, in chat. The best thing about Adobe XD is spell checker. I am not going to lie to you. This is why I do a lot of my presentations in Adobe XD because, I, yes, <laughs> uh, it, it's just all I can do design and it helps brother out when, it, you know, their spelling and, and reading is not the best. <laughs> I have to say that. Um. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a spell checker. Am I missing something? Oh my gosh. I mean, it, it might not even be a spell checker. It, it, well, I guess it is, but they give you the little, well, you, you see, here's the thing. You just spell everything right. You just told us everything, you, you, you know. Um, for us people that just like, you know, we slap the keyboard and hope we spell it right. We see the squiggly line and then we right click and we are corrected. <laughs> I see. Okay, um, I know I said I use icon, um, uh what is it called icons to go a lot but i also sometimes want to get icons elsewhere so i've gotten a couple here that i figured i would probably use in my design so i'm looking for the chat icon 
Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let me just turn off grid for now so I can see. Make it a bit bigger, so like 17 or maybe even 18. Awesome, that works. Okay, cool. So we have our bio section, I think pretty much done. Although I might play around with the spacing. And now we're gonna go into structuring our video content section. So for the videos, I kind of wanted to display them in like tile format, but I wanted to use rounded rectangles because I, like I mentioned earlier, I really like the rounded rectangle design that a lot of these um, inspiration images use. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing as well. So we're gonna have like two categories. I'm gonna make them 16 pixels, I think. And this first one, I'm just gonna call it videos and we have six videos. And the second we'll call it likes. So we're kind of assuming on someone's profile, they kind of want to see videos they published, but maybe even videos that they've liked of other users. So we're going to include both those categories here. Uh, okay, hey everyone. So we'll actually be right back. We're just going to sort out a few technical difficulties, but please stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. I am totally, I apologize. My cat was microwaving a burrito. It totally wiped out my internet, but we're back. All right, Elsa, where we left off. <laughs> I can't believe your cat knows how to use a, a microwave. That's amazing. Listen, the way that we eat in this house, our, our, our burritos know how to microwave burritos. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Um, well, we're actually doing the panels for the video content on people's profile. So we're essentially almost done with the layout, which is awesome. Let me make this dark. And then I'll make this a bit of a lighter shade, except that's too light. Something to also think about when you're designing is like not making things so light that no one can actually read them. Um, and that's something that I've also been practicing as well, because you want to make things look cool and, you know, look nice and aesthetic and then no one can read what you've designed. So it's just something to like keep in mind as well. Add these. But I like what we got going on. And there's a systematic approach to what's happening here. Yeah, same. And I kinda... actually, go yeah. ahead. One of the things I really like is you've also categorized the hierarchy of your shades. We didn't necessarily point that out. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it's because it kind of did it automatically because I already had them laid out here. So mm. when I clicked them and then clicked the, let me close this, plus icon, it actually arranged them in order automatically. But yeah, it is helpful to do it for in cases like those because then it's a lot easier to know this shade of gray is lighter than this one because they're already arranged yeah. accordingly.
Okay. So I have this all set up. I think the last final thing that I need to do for this page then before we kind of go back to potentially adding colors, potentially doing a new screen, I'm not entirely sure yet, is the bottom navigation. So going back to our mood board, let me just hide the grid layout. So a lot of these concepts have a bottom navigation. I actually really do like using bottom navigations in my designs. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're not gonna make them look like any of these, maybe kind of similar to, probably similar to something like this. And it's probably what I'm gonna go for. Okay. I love the fact that you have so many, like all that you would think social media, like when you look at social media, like, uh, TikTok, Instagram, they have like a similarity, but you just had all those screenshots of like very different layouts for kind of like the same thing. And I'm like, ooh, I can't even wait to see kind of the direction that we take ours. Those are all just like, mm, that all, your, your mood board is like straight Jolly Ranchers. I love it. <laughs> what does it mean straight Jolly Ranchers? I don't, I've never <laughs> had Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just say you, have you had Skittles? Oh yeah, yeah, I have. Taste the rainbow. There we go. All the colors. Ah, uh, okay. I see. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm going to move this up because we see like our home. It's a layer that came with a template kind of ends right here. So I want my text to go above that. So we're just going to push it up a bit. And then I think I'm going to make my text smaller. I actually don't know if I had. Oh, I did. Yep, I did have a, a version, 12 point version. So normally, um, like going back to our designs, I think most of them don't have text accompanying the icons because typically you can tell what an icon means. So if I had a home icon, you know, that means home. Or if I had a chat icon, that means chat or messages. But sometimes it does help to just include textual cues as well, if you can. So in this case, mm -hmm. we're going to include textual cues. I guess it's gonna be home. This will be explore. And then a couple more. This will be chat. And then our last one will be profile. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, how many? Did you discuss already how many screens we're going to do today? I think we we touched on the particular goals, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Lottie, the, did, we didn't talk about how deep we're gonna go into the actual experience, did we? Um, no, I think in my goals, I kind of kept a general start working on designs, but I have four wireframe screens. So I'm hoping we can like get through two or at least one and a half. Because once we figure out the layout for the first one, then doing the rest, or at least for me anyway, once you do one screen, doing the rest is a lot faster, typically. Definitely. Yeah. I just, I'm just so excited to start getting with the, the Lottie and the video stuff, you know? I was just like, oh. How many in the in the chat, how many of you guys have played with the, the, the new features in Adobe XD? Those, uh, it's just, what is it, chef's kiss? I was about to say French kiss, that's not, that's not correct. <laughs> French kiss. <laughs> the features are amazing like it's honestly really cool what you can do with them so i'm super mm. excited to, like get into that too like today or tomorrow but today is structure we have to start off with a strong foundation to be able <laughs> to dive into the cool stuff tomorrow that's that's always the hard thing where it's just you want to I always have that problem. Do you feel you got you as designers still have that problem where it's just like, yes, we know we have to do the foundational work. We know we're supposed to use our brain before we go to the canvas and try to figure out how we're going to solve the problem before we start slapping paint onto the canvas. I, do, you, do you still find that still hard for you? Because I just, you know, I want to I want to get my paintbrush. I want to, uh, you know, get my paints and just start going at the creativity piece of things. Yeah, I think it's hard for me as well, because that that is the fun part when you can start choosing all the colors and, you know, how it looks and making it look pretty. That's the fun part. So it is sometimes hard to like take a step, step back and be like, you know what, let me actually 
fine tune this, this a bit more to make my life easier down the line. But it it helps a lot. It's worthwhile when you actually take the time to do it. Yeah. Like a lot of the time in work, I'm. It's like Brandon, <laughs> or it's just like Brand. Uh, you wanna what is it? You have to use your mind before you use your heart. And sometimes it's a little too hard because my heart is screaming. Just slap the canvas with the paint. It's hard being a dog, guys. It's, all right. <laughs> but, you know, hey, there's problems to solve. And, you know, we it's a nice balance. You can do both of them at the same time. Uh, but, you know, it, for people to actually use something in our, you know, in our field, to for it to actually solve a problem, for it to, you know, actually have the ability to gain traction and adoption, we have to make sure it's helping people. Yeah, that's that's the key thing. Because you're not just designing for you, or if you are, then it's good to get in the practice of thinking of how you're designing for others. So what you like may not necessarily be the best thing for you know a majority of your targeted audience. So it just kind of helps to, to do the preparation beforehand, because that's when you're really thinking about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And my profile icon is... Here we go. Let me just resize this. And right for our large icon in the middle, we are going to go with a video camera icon because our primary action that we want to provide to our user is upload a new video or start a new live stream. So that's the icon we're going to go with. All right, awesome. I think our general layout for the home page is actually pretty much done. I am now actually going to go in and start adding some of the media that we're going to be using. So I've already kind of taken the videos that I wanted to use and put them here. So the cool thing, once again, about XD is like similar to how you can drag and drop images to your um, design and have it kind of go in a particular shape. You can do the same thing with videos. So when you drag it into a shape, it'll mask the video according to the shape you've selected. So it's now in our rounded rectangle shape, which is what we want. Is she gonna hide this so I can add a couple more details here. So I want it to show, this is gonna be our video that's now live. So I wanted to show how many users are currently watching. So let's just put a random number there. And these are gonna be, these are placeholders for our videos. Yes, so these are, these are all technically videos. So if I click into oh, this word. and here's our video. And right now we have it set to play on tap. Very nice. Yep. Although we are, of course, not going to create a function where you can play on tap because that doesn't make sense. But they are going to be the videos that we're going to use for our design. Um, Now, when it, see, I, I already, I'm like, oh, there's one video in there. Let's talk about the video and let's talk about all the other videos that we're going to have in there. Because <laughs> I'm like, I already have questions like, Elsa, tell everybody how the new video feature works. The different types of feet, the different types of settings it has, but we'll get there. I'm trying to ease my, uh, excitement. <laughs> my happy excitement. Yes. Yeah, we will yeah. do that. A hundred percent. It's easier to to like visualize it when you can actually see what somebody's doing. So we will get to it for sure. Yes, because there's a lot to explain there, ladies and gentlemen. Especially if you haven't touched it before, and uh, yeah. we, I, I just, I just so badly want to see more video content um, <laughs> from you guys uh, in the in the chat. In you know, on Behance, you know, we want more. 
Okay. Um, awesome. So now I'm going to group. So here we have our wonderful number. Oh, actually, I went with a play icon. I might just drag this on the outside. I want to replace it with my user icon because this is supposed to be the video that is actually live for the user at the moment. So going back to our icons and selecting user, let's bring that in. Drag it. Awesome. And then let's hide this polygon. And move that. Okay, awesome. So this works. I'm not sure if I want to make this bold or normal. I'll make it bold. That's just so it's like easier to read. So this is our first video. I'm actually going to remove the other rectangles because I already have it here. Let's add in the rest. And normally, um, I'd recommend using repeat grid in this instance because it just makes it a lot easier to create multiple versions of essentially the same block or the same element. But in this particular instance, because one of our video clips is different from the others, I just think it's easier to kind of drag and drop them manually or duplicate them manually. I would do the exact same thing. I, you yeah. know, there's a time and a place for repeat grid that saves a lot of time with repeat grid, but sometimes you just have to, you know, select things, hold alt and just pull it down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to increase our artboard size slightly. And there oh, we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. We have uh, Voodoo in the chat asks, do you have any tips for how you pair fonts and choose sizing and weight? That's a great question because I was, I don't know what type of uh, golden ratio math equation and calculus you're doing for six different um, uh, uh, font styles. So that that is definitely a book you need to crack open for us. Um, I really <laughs> had a, a book to recommend. I think that's also something that I've been planning on doing because I know there are a couple of different like sources you can go to that will say different things. The way I do it normally is by eye. So I have a general understanding of how large I want something to be in comparison to, for example, an H1 heading to a small paragraph text. So in my mind, looking at it, I'm like, this is roughly how I want it to look. But I do know that there are appropriate ratios that you can reference as well that are probably more scientific in how you make those kinds of decisions. I'm just not familiar with what they are yet, but yeah. If you can't do it by eye or you find that it still looks off, then it does help to kind of reference those sources and find like a more specific way of going about it. That's a good answer. I also, too, use my eye to look at other people's work to find other fonts that I probably should use as my go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> So we're just pulling in the new videos. Yep. I got all these videos from Pexels, which is a really great source for like free high HD um, images and videos as well. So that's what I'm working with here. Oh, is that like not working? And let's see. It's not letting you pull it into the new. I think I have to like manually select it. The actual like, video. Then the yeah. layer, yeah. And then drag and drop it. Yeah, the videos are very specific. Very specific. But they look so nice when you actually <laughs> are done implementing them. It's like, oh, wow, this looks amazing. They, it brings a whole another life to brings a whole another life to your actual work. I, I remember for 
um, for years. <laughs> uh some myself and some of my friends literally used to just like make png sequences just to export into you've seen this you've been a part of some of my challenges um yeah, yeah. png sequences to have inside of xd just to mimic the frames of the <laughs> animation that we wanted um so this is you know this is a this is a lifesaver yeah it is it just kind of I remember uh, somebody for one of your challenges had like this whole sequence of of images that you know and played made a video and I was just so amazed and now we don't have to do that anymore. We can yes. just add the videos right in. So because this is our live video, I'm adding like a recording icon that signals that this person is live, and those are typically red. So. Mm -hmm. We are going to go with red. And then just the text here that says live to make it absolutely clear that this person is live. Is that the same woman with the watermelon? It is. It's like multiple versions of her. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say, I was like, if we get to watch her eat the watermelon, I was like, I know I have a full watermelon in my fridge. And I was like, I know exactly. <laughs> if not burritos, watermelon, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, after this session today. I was lucky, like on Pexels, I found a series was like the same girl because I like consistency. So I was like, I really want to find a couple images. So now we get a sense this is an account of a person who likes to go to the beach, right. likes pool parties, something of the two. Audrey Hepburn specifically is her name. Um, okay, awesome. I'm just gonna move this up. And then see, this is why naming your layers is so helpful because now I have so many and some are hidden and some are not. And I'm like, what is this? Okay, let's name this um, bottom navigation, just so we are clear on what this is. And we want it to actually stay in the same place while we scroll. So as you can see, it doesn't do that now. So we're gonna click this checkbox to make sure that the position is fixed as we're scrolling. Awesome. So I'm actually gonna make this white. As Fergie would say, is you're you're in the the branding gang. No layer, uh, hashtag. Uh, what is it? No layer gang. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But it's important to like once you're at a stage where you have this many uh, elements happening and you, this many groupings. Now we're getting a little complex. But you know, before just like in painting or in drawing, you're trying to get the full. You know, you're just quickly trying to get the composition. And then, you know, once you start, okay, this is the idea where you're going to run with. Now let's kind of organize some things together um, because we're concretalizing, making concrete. There we go. We'll keep it simple. Making concrete <laughs> some of our decisions. Yeah. It just kind of makes it a lot easier. Also, when prototyping, so we're actually going to tomorrow, probably going to have to go back and name some of these. When prototyping, your layers do have to have the same name across artboards if you're using auto animate. Yes. So it's also really important for that as well. Yes, that's where most people get tripped up. They're like, I want to animate, like they made their two screens and you know, they, they've not named anything. Then they go to animate, they think everything's gonna be fine. Next thing you know, the second screen blows up and they're like, but I did everything and I don't know why. It's the names guys. You can only be, uh, you know, on my, on my team only for so long before things break. So you have to start naming your layers when you get to animating, you, you know. Oh my gosh, yeah. It, that trips a lot of people up, so. Ooh, there we go. Everything probably looks weird because it's all black and gray. We will add colors tomorrow, definitely. But at least our layout and structure looks good. We kind of have a basis of how we want to move forward with the next couple of screens. So that's kind of what, what we wanted to accomplish today, which is great. It's perfect. And I think it, that's where you're using the time wisely today. Um, with that said, while you're putting those things together, can you enlighten us with what would be your dream design gig? Oh, that is 
It's such a good question. What would be my dream design gig? I think, actually, I know the answer to this. It would definitely be working at a medium, I'm going to say medium sized agency that does really awesome, what should I say? Creative work, award winning creative work. And I say that because right now I do freelance, which is great. But also the issue with freelance is that for one thing, consistency is hard. And also sometimes it does feel like you're missing out on that mentorship aspect. Like I'm still a pretty new designer. It would be nice to kind of learn from someone, have them mentor you and guide you as you are entering the industry for the first time. So I think that's also partly why that would kind of be my dream gig, working at an established agency where you feel like kind of you're valued but at the same time it's a great learning opportunity for you if that makes sense yeah that makes total sense and i i really you know agree with you with the um i guess the mentorship portion or having a network that essentially has everything that you don't bring to the table because that just makes you yeah. that much more uh, versatile and really have like a pool of knowledge to pull from that you might not um, have inherently. And you being uh, part of that pool brings something that everybody else necessarily doesn't have too. So you guys are just complimenting each other. And that's, you know, that's even if you are in the freelance world, that's why a lot of the time, you know, you have to build a network and, and hang out with those individuals, um, you know, even if it's virtually quite often. So you guys are exchanging knowledge, um, and that, you know, sometimes in the, the freelance or, you know, even um, in the freelance world, you're busy pitching, doing the work, pitching, doing the work. Uh, it's hard to find find that time and that balance. Um, yep. Yeah. But that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, of course. That was an amazing question. I have opened up my Lottie Files plugin because we are going to be including our first animation of the i was gonna say of the day yeah look let's say of the day of the day in this specific live stream so if you have the plugin in xd you can actually search for the animation you specifically want so in this case i want the record um icon live stream i don't know if i'll get one that i kind of want to work with but let's see what comes up if not record we might try the word live stream as well this is not bad okay that's not bad Let's see a couple others. We got options. So many options. How many did they say? 111 options. So a lot of options to work with. I think I like this one though. So I'm going to I'm going to go with that. So you just have to click it and then you can choose how you want to insert it into your project to use the Lottie um, options that XD has. You have to insert it as a Lottie. I've actually never tried inserting them as SVGs. So I actually don't know what it would be like if you did. But we're going to insert it as a Lottie and then just resize it because I want to place it on top of the original live stream icon we had before. And similar to any videos you incorporate, once you've clicked onto the video or the animation, you'll have this kind of interactive media panel on your right. And then you can click on that to play around with the settings. So in this case, I want this to play automatically and I want it to loop. So we're gonna just adjust those settings. That's what I'm actually thinking. It's kind of hard to see because it's so tiny, but it is actually playing and looping. But I'm thinking I might actually move that up here because I want it to be clear that the user is live even from their main avatar image. So let me just up here, create another circle. Um, And I love the fact that with the Lottie files, like you, those are animations that are already created. You just have to have the idea of, huh, I think something like this should go here. Check out the Lottie uh, already built out library and you literally just hit import and it's there. Yeah, it's like really ridiculously easy, honestly. So easy that Elsa decided to, you know, appease Brandon today and get some animations in there just to, you know, for a little bit more smile today. <laughs> just, 
he was demanding <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> we have to, guys. You know, when things are moving, I feel moving. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully the rest of us. So let's see here. I'm going to add that as well. Let me also add it to my palette here. Yeah, so I'm actually probably going to remove it from here because this is too small anyway. And just have that be the standard live button we've got. Although maybe make it a bit smaller. And then here is where I want to have the animated version. So let me just close the preview window and reopen it. Oh, whoops. Select the artboard I want to open and then reopen it. And now we can see a lot more clearly. We can see that the circle kind of shrinks and enlarges. So awesome. Our Lottie animation works as we'd want it to. So that's great. Uh, what I thought you were going to do is I thought you were setting up the red background to be the thing that pulses. I was like, oh, I see you, Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> but I also see you with this. This is pretty cool. That would be a crazy design. And now that I've added this, let me move this a bit lower. Okay, awesome. Oh, so good. our... Let me just change these because they're actually supposed to be... play icons and not the user icons. Oh. So the shortcut for actually hiding elements in your layers panel that I use a lot is command comma. So that'll hide that. And then command comma again, if you wanna bring it back. Or you can just toggle the eye icon on your layers panel. Noted. Just move that. And with that, I really kind of like the way our profile page looks. It's looking pretty decent. It's looking okay, pretty awesome. good. And we have a whole, we have like a whole, basically not a full hour, but we're there essentially. We, ha we have so much more time left. Now I'm, I'm excited what else we're going to see more. Yeah, same. I thought it would take us a lot longer, but we've really kind of blown through this. So um, I actually think I might go back and sort out the color palette before moving forward with the second type of video screen. So this screen is going to be... Um, Essentially, if you were to click on any of these videos, it would enlarge similar to TikTok and it would show the entire video in full screen. And then, of course, we have like our user details here and then a couple of actions here that we'd want um, people to be able to take, like liking and commenting and also like a smiley emoji sticker action where we can potentially incorporate more Lottie animations as well. So... Yeah, I think we can just quickly go back and determine some of our color choices before moving forward. So I actually have the screen here that I've labeled color inspo and I've done so because I just thought these were really cool color combos and I kind of wanted to go with either the classic aesthetic route that I typically do with my designs or just something really out there. So we're using this as a reference point. So I'm actually going to create to duplicate this and we're going to be using a plugin that I definitely recommend everyone to check out if they are working with different colors called colors inspo and it has a feature here contrast checker that lets you check the contrast of your colors against each other so if you wanted to check 
would this text be legible against the white background? And it'll tell you whether it is by giving you the pass marks. Or if it isn't, like if I for some reason wanted to use this type of gray on a white background, it'll tell you that this is very much not a good idea because it's not accessible. So we're going to use color input to make sure all our color choices are accessible and legible for everyone. So as a starting point, I don't know. I don't know if anyone in the chat has any colors that stand out to them. I don't want to kind of go with a single one. I, I, I'm totally down for mixing and matching. I do like this purple. It is so nice. So I, I'm, yeah. I might stick with that. Let us know in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, which, man, those are a lot of colors. That's too many options, Elsa. You can't let creatives like see that many color palettes because we're just going to say all of them. We want all particular things. We want to see different copies. It's too many colors for creatives to tune in on. Oh, that's true. Yes. That is and these, uh, this color inspo, did you pop this out of uh, color inspo, you said? Oh, oh my, I, didn't, I just realized the name is similar. No, <laughs> I got um, this particular image from an article written by awards, the website awards ah. three W's. Um, so they were wrote an article on like color palettes and they had this as a as a featured image and that's where I got it from. You too were using your eyes to see what other designers were using. I, I, I understand. That's, that's the real <laughs> superpower of the designer. Um, quick question while you're putting this together and feel mm -hmm. free to be like, Brandon, I'm working through something. Um, it takes a lot of brain power to do both of these things at the same time. I know how that is. And my yeah. computation is low. Right. So, yeah. I, hey, I'm first in line for that Elon Musk chip. Okay, uh, what is what is your so far in your freelance work? What has been your favorite project you've ever worked on? Um, oh, that's such a good question. I would have to say. Oh, now I have to really think. Yeah, I would have to say there was a website I designed for a client. She was releasing a product um, related to kids, mm. kids and toys. That's what I'll say. Kids and toys, because it's not out yet. Um, so she yeah. wanted a website that kind of had that really, you know, fun and interactive look and feel. And it was the first time, actually, no, second time I designed something that was specifically about kids or a product related to kids but it was the first time that i really went all out in terms of what i created and the final product was just really fun and playful and cute and the client was great to work with because she was so open to like all these different ideas and i would say the design is pretty non-conventional i can't wait to like publish it and share it once it's live but that's been my favorite so far like off the top of my head just because it was a really fun project i liked working with a client um and yeah, it was just a really great experience. I love it. When can, can is this something coming soon to be hands or are we talking months from now? Or is this, is this part? Oh, no. It's okay if it's all NDA related. We won't talk about any of that stuff. But um, I would hope coming soon. If not like soon. the end of this month, then at least end of January next year. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Well, we're definitely going to have to follow you to check that out. Sounds interesting. Yeah, definitely. So I kind of like these three colors, the lavender, the, I don't know what you would call this, the teal, teal, I guess, and this like darker blue shade. So I'm just going to make sure that, um, so I'm probably going to be using white on the blue. So I'm just going to select both. Let me try this. Oh no, I'm wondering like how I kind of want to check. Oh, okay. So the blue on white, but we just select the blue is not too great, but I think the white on blue is also not too great. So I'm probably just going to make this slightly, slightly darker just to make certain that it works. 
Ooh, this is much better. A lot more pass marks. We have at least three stars, which is pretty good. I love that it uses a little emoji too. You don't even have to look at the stars. You're like, star eyes, perfect. Let's put it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> and then this, I'm gonna make it a bit lighter. I don't know if I'll use the teal, but I'll have it as an option for now. I like this lavender purple. I think that's cute. Okay, yeah, awesome. So I actually like to um, have different shades of colors that I use because sometimes you have a specific color that's your main color, but it helps to have lighter and darker shades of that color. That way, if you need to incorporate something that's slightly darker than your main color, but you don't wanna choose a completely different color, you still have that shade within your palette. So to do that, I have my main blue shade here, and then I'm just gonna click this particular rectangle next to it, and I want a darker shade from it. So on the palette color wheel that opens up, I'm gonna select HSB, so hue, saturation, brightness. And then on the brightness panel, I'm just gonna move that down two notches. And I'm holding the shift key, which is why it's moving by large increments, I think like by 10, yeah. Hmm. Minus 10, minus 10. So now I have that shade, and this time I'm gonna do it four times, two, three, to have like a really dark shade. And then same thing here, I'm gonna have like two lighter shades as well. I like that. So you do it in the, I never, is that how you did your, uh, your, your previous, uh, hues as well? Yeah. These the ones, ones above? Yeah. yeah. And they're just a certain, uh, hue range apart. You just, you know, use the 10 increments holding the shift and you just upped and down with yeah. the arrow keys. Yeah. I never really even thought about that. I've always like literally manually, you know, uh, tried to, pick the different i guess it's really the brightness it's not the hue yeah no it's the brightness and so not the hue so it's still the same yeah. hue a slightly darker or a slightly um lighter than your main color and then with our purple i actually don't really think i'm gonna be using other shades so I'll, I'll do like one lighter although what lighter than this is like white this is already really light i don't think we need a lighter version it's maybe just like two darker And then because this obviously, since it's going like straight down on your color wheel, it's kind of getting yep. a bit gray. So you can also adjust the saturation as well. So I'm also gonna increase the saturation by like two. I will leave teal here, but I won't add to it right now because I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna use it. But for the meantime, I am gonna add, add the colors that I've already got here. <laughs> So we have our blues, and like I said before, you can create a group. Let's call that blue. And then we have our lavenders. We're gonna create another group and call this lavender. So we have all our colors now. And then I'll add this as well as its own thing. But yeah, awesome. So now that we have our colors set up, we can go back to our design and start adding colors to it. So I think I actually want to create a linear gradient for this one, as opposed to just making it a solid color. So I'm going to see what it looks like if I combine the blue. Let me add that here. And the purple. So I have to actually add them to my palette here in order to play around with them with my linear gradient. So if we start off as blue. It's a nice little rainbow, a little, little softness there. Yeah. Although I actually think I want this purple to be like even, even lighter. So I just copied the hex code and I'm gonna 
put oops have to make sure to change it back to hex as opposed to hue saturation brightness and then put that in we we'll actually like the light purple to dark purple too but let me see what it looks like with the blue to light purple because i just want um, it to be like a soft color you're saying yeah. I, I was saying i was like i don't know what it does uh when it when uh i just feel like diagonal gradients just always look the best just like it's never good left to right or up and down it's just it must be diagonal i agree like i don't know why having it vertically or horizontally i'm never a fan but once it's diagonal it's like yep this looks good Voodoo says one of her favorite things is blocking out the colors for the full design. That's is really, like I said, it's really interesting watching, um, you know, do that. I've never blocked anything out like that. Uh, I typically, I'm like, I know what colors I'm, I'm using three. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> or three different shit. Or we're doing white, black, and then there's one accent. There's no, no complication. Um, yeah. <laughs> My, my mind doesn't work like that when we're dealing with I can't even count all of these these I'm saying colors but there's really just four different variations you have the you have the green the red the purple the blue but the variations within the purple and blue would would uh you know blow my mind how did you my my real question is how did you learn to deal with that many colors because especially if you're you say you're new to design but colors is literally when you're in design is somebody's job like there is a colorist uh, if you're, you're real like if you're in if you're, depending on where you are but how did yeah. you learn to really utilize um different variations of colors like how did you practice or did you, did you just yeah. watch and mimic um i think it was because i started to get more into um design systems yeah because I'm really big on organization and I thought design systems are a really great way of essentially organizing the different assets or components to um, a project. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos, kind of read a lot of articles. And when you are creating a design system, typically, especially with your color palettes, it's never just the one color, like primary, secondary, tertiary. It's like different shades of that color as well. And then also grayscale shades and, you know, shade for warning colors or success colors or, you know, they have a, error messages. So they have a lot of different shades depending on what use case you might have in your project. It's never just the one specific color. So that's kind of what made me start getting into it more and I found that it was helpful because you know sometimes you do just need a slightly darker shade of the same color yeah. and it's helpful to already have that established before you even start designing understood now I'm just going in and changing all of my Oops. Our, our uh, magnifying glass is like, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> right? There we go. Okay, finally. I love how I... I picked blue and purple and I'm just using purple. <laughs> See, I, that's what I'm saying. It's so easy with all those colors you did. I cannot wrap my mind around how we're going to use all those different uh, variations. Cause I was like, everything already looks really good with that purple, that nice blue and purple. And I'm really curious to see, you know, how we're going to, and you know what? I think the thing is, is that it's valuable regardless if you use them or not. Mm -hmm. And cause in the, in the pages that we do, in these next few days, they might not yeah. have all the uh, use cases in which we might need to use all those colors. I think the yeah. challenging thing is when you make a color palette, newer designers think you have to use all those colors, which isn't necessarily the case. Yeah, It's only in, let's say, you know, you, we've used that green, we've used that red for error. 
or uh, uh, we've used the green for like confirmation or acceptance, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not until we need to communicate something else that means like go or is an affirmative action, but we don't want to use one. Uh, it needs a different shade or a different type of green to signify and message uh, something and signal something else. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think also sometimes it is trial and error because you can either find that having a, a primary and secondary color works for your design. So it's like they have different functions or you can find having the single color. So just primary works as well. So for instance, in this particular, I've used the blue for the really nice gradient on top, but for the rest of my design, I wanted a softer look. So I'm thinking maybe I just stick with purple because maybe the blue is a bit too saturated and doesn't fit in with the aesthetic I had in mind for my design. So sometimes it's also like while designing, you're also like figuring that out for yourself, like what's working and you know what's not working. Definitely, it's all a process. I, th I think that's one of the most challenging things too. I mean, we were talking about, a little bit earlier where um you know you were saying that this is your second time in the rodeo and things aren't that uh scary this time around and mm -hmm. you know one of the scariest things is that uh, decision making on the fly because a lot of the stuff that we do as designers is not set in stone we're literally going and testing okay does this work does this not work like we literally don't know what we're doing while we're doing it. we're all it's all like uh, testing um and for people to watch that you know especially if we're professionals or we know what we're doing we're supposed to know the answers which in which case we're just good at possibly knowing where to walk not necessarily the um 100 um perfect answer we just are confident in taking steps to possibly be a little bit more right than the last time we tried yep a lot of trial and error essentially yeah I'm wondering, so this is B3, B3, and then I kind of want maybe 999. So I'm kind of thinking of, so right now we're on the profile page, so I want to make the profile part on our bottom navigation look active. So this is the current page we're on, and now I'm just choosing what I want our inactive icons to look like, because I don't want to make them too light. Like I said, you also want to keep in mind accessibility but I also don't want to make them like super dark either. So we're just kind of, I think I'm going to go with this shade. 999 is not too bad. Yep. And in our nav, we just kind of cut out a piece of the main layer for design reasons. Like it's not even for like functional reasons just because it looks cool so we have like our main key here and it's kind of like floating this is yeah. really shaping up and i love the fact by the way that you are um can you actually explain to i'm not sure if you did something special but you essentially have your preview kind of like sticky it's not going behind after our, uh, adobe xd how is how is that happening? Oh, I thought that's what everyone's did. <laughs> well, everybody, it's important to know. But like, for example, if I, I click onto my Adobe XD, it actually pushes the preview behind it. Oh, that is so strange. Mine's always done this. So I actually thought this was the default. Like, even if I click back onto my design, it still stays there. Oh, maybe maybe it's a Brandon Gross thing. Maybe maybe it has nothing to do with Adobe XD. Listen, like I said, my my operating my personal operating system is a little special. As, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh gosh, yeah. This I is had why no Elsa is in in the in the seat today running this. Oh my god, we 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 have like a a platform error on your program. That is so shocking because yeah, that would be really irritating if it kept kind of going behind your, I always design like this when I'm doing mobile app, like my preview window is permanently open. I don't know mm -hmm. why it's just easier for me to visual, like see what the design looks like on the window as opposed to in the actual workspace. Oh, well, that's perfect. Well, now I know that's a possibility. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to actually figure that out. Yeah. So I, think I, our I put it on though. You think? Our profile screen is done, so we're actually just gonna 
get started on the next part, which is our video screen. So if we assume we clicked any of these videos and it enlarged, how would it look like? So actually I copied and pasted the bottom nav. Actually, might reduce this a bit. But I'm actually going to turn that into a component because we're going to be using that throughout. So if we want to make any changes, it'll be a lot easier to make changes on the original, the master component, and then have it apply to every other instance. So to make something a component, you just select it. And then the shortcut is Command K on Mac, I believe. What did I press? There we go. Mm -hmm. So now it has kind of this green selection board around it, which tells you that it's a component. And then I'm just going to select that and paste it here. So this is our main component. You can see the diamond is full. So that tells you that it is. And then this is an instance of our component. So the diamond looks a bit different. But if you ever kind of lose track of where your master component is, you can right click any of them and then select edit main component. And then you can just, it'll take you directly to where the main component is and you can edit it from there as a tip. Very nice. Yeah, so I think I'm actually going to go with this ocean video as our sample that's enlarged because I really like how that looks. I think that's my favorite clip. So let me just find it once more. So once again, just drag and drop and our video appears, which is awesome. I am going to add a rectangle with a gradient just so that our text at the bottom is legible also shortcut for opacity as well i'm trying to like keep in mind all the shortcuts i'm using so i can explain them but if you want to decrease the opacity of something without like toggling with the slider here and you have the value in mind so if i wanted to make this 30 percent opaque I just have to click the number three on my keyboard and it'll go to 30%. Or like 50% is number five. 10% is number one. If you want to go back to 100%, it's zero. So like just as a tip as well. It's a pro tip right there. I actually slapped the keyboard before I figured out where the opacity was. This was like back in the day. I was like, this, this has to be the same as Photoshop. So I just started hitting the numbers. It's way easier than going to, to mess with the knobs. More efficient that way. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to bring our Aubrey, Audrey Hepburn avatar. And just align this here. Okay, awesome. So our username for this account was Audrey XOXO. Once again, we have a description. And as, as we've decided, we are not using Lorem Ipsum. So, okay. Since this is a video about oceans, I'm just gonna say, um, Quick clip of my amazing time in, I don't even know where this would be. The water. <laughs> <laughs> the hey, water. Listen, when you don't know what's going on, you got to keep it simple. That's the way I live life. <laughs> <laughs> amazing That's time. like my motto. It doesn't matter which water, <laughs> which ocean. With the, exactly. With the tilde. Okay, now. All right. It's like my every yeah. sentence I've ever spoken in life. <laughs> okay, that works. That's awesome. Although I might make it like 14 pixels instead of 16. Yeah, that's awesome. That looks great. Okay. Just push this in the center. Okay, awesome. And then over here, we have a couple of different action um icons that we are also going to be working with so i'm thinking obviously we want one for likes and mm. we want one for comments 
And then I actually want to, for the top one, have it be an emoji one where essentially it'll open up a panel of stickers that you can click and it's almost like live reaction. So I think Instagram um, live stories, whatever they're called, have that. So that would be cool as well if we could prototype that tomorrow and just implement it today. Are we going to pull a, uh, one of the animations Howard Pinsky pulled off for one of the uh, releases for the, I think it was essentially both the video and Lottie feature release during Max. Are we, are we going to pull one of those, one of those reactions? Oh, I don't remember which reaction features he used when in the release videos, but yes, essentially the same concept. I actually did look around um, Lottie and they have a couple of um, animations that are similar. So it's like emojis, yes. but they're like similar in style. So it still works. So yeah, we're going to use those. I can't wait. Just are they the it. super animated ones? Ooh, I guess or, that'll be to keep things, you know, get people back tomorrow. We'll see tomorrow. So you have to come back now. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Our lips are sealed. <laughs> yeah. I, but I like that we're going uh, for the the kind of what's it called? I saw in your mood board there was a sort of side. Uh, not necessarily navigation, but sort of elements that people could, you know, react to what it is that they're watching on this social platform. Um, I really like that having this, uh, all these different features on the side. I thought it was really unique rather than having everything like stuffed into the menu or the, the main nav. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm al I also was also like thinking just what would be easier for someone to do. So not making it too overwhelming. I always found that with Instagram stories, having all the comments pop up here. And yeah. I don't know if you can actually go back and like look at older comments. Maybe there is. It's been so long since I've used Instagram like that. But I always found that it was a lot. So I for this design, I'm kind of thinking, how do we keep it more simple and more straightforward for the user? <laughs> Agreed. While I'm saying all this, I'm like, Brandon, TikTok's organized like that. What do you mean? I'm like, oh, <laughs> the site that you spend five hours of your day on? Yes, Brandon, that is organized the exact same way. Not um, five hours. <laughs> listen, we, we, we have some things to learn about crypto. Hey, they got some good financial and, and crypto TikToks on there. It's not financial advice, but there's some good individuals on there. Um, question. Mm -hmm is do you have your adobe xd like in the settings is there anything that you have changed in there um have you customized adobe xd in any way to kind of fit your workflow at all or no you just you kind of open xd and the way that it's run has been the way that you've done your work essentially have you customized um the settings in adobe xd at all um i don't believe so okay i think yeah, I, I don't sometimes customized it. How would you customize it? Like, what are the main ways people customize there? Oh, I have like, no idea. I thought you, I was hoping you had the answer. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> I ask questions because I truly don't know. I'm hoping the other person does. Neither I'm... of us on this live stream know how to customize our XD. If you have <laughs> ideas, we're willing to listen. I'm gonna go ahead and make this purple. So I'm thinking in this bottom one, maybe a share icon, like if people wanna share the clip or video, cause we don't really have anywhere else where I would want to put that. Also, I forgot to bring in my back arrow and options arrow. And I'm also thinking it might be a lot to have four different buttons to click here. And maybe share could theoretically be under options. So if you click the options icon on the top right. See, these are the decisions that I need to sleep on. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. <laughs> a good night's sleep is like underappreciated, like immensely. <laughs> like. I feel, do you feel the same way when you were like working super hard and you're just like, you know what? I should just keep bulldozing through it. But if you had just gone to sleep, 
you would have saved yourself, the people you're probably going to talk to the next day, and also the, your project. Yeah, because funnily enough, when you do sleep or when you just take a step away from your laptop, it's like your brain is working in overdrive to like solve whatever problems you were thinking in your head or like it's still working on whatever it is that you're working on, but like subconsciously. So I always find like when I wake up the next day and it's like I'm refreshed and I'm not really thinking about anything. And eventually when I get back to my design, it's like, oh, okay, this is how I want it to look. It's like everything clicks. So your brain is like still working on, you know, whatever your project was, even when you're not doing it consciously. Exactly. Rest and break from work so your brain can work on other things are super important. Like maybe go have some watermelon, a burrito, like somebody in the chat said earlier, a waterito. I'm not sure I would eat that, but there was a suggestion in the chat earlier. Um, I didn't get to, to <laughs> put that out there, but that was some good branding work, my friend. Um. <laughs> yeah, take a break once in a while. It, I think it helps a lot. Okay, I'm going to include it for now. maybe exclude it okay we'll exclude it for now i'm like so either or in before like tomorrow i'm gonna be like actually let's, let's let's bring that back <laughs> yeah let's, let's bring it back i think we need it okay but for now i'm gonna leave it like this so this is gonna be our screen for if you click onto a video and this is what it'll look like and i think this is pretty good so once we get prototyping tomorrow, the idea is that, oh, oh, because we made it a component, it stopped being fixed. So let's just go back and do that. So we'll click onto this and it'll open onto this screen and it will play the video automatically. So actually we'll set up the video to play automatically anyway. So once again, just click onto your video layer and then select the play automatically button. And then if you wanted to loop, you can click this icon and it'll open up these settings and then you just have to turn on loop playback. So let me just go ahead and close this and reopen it. And there we go. Our nice okay. ocean video is playing. Yay, that's awesome. Okay. That's seriously great. Yeah, we did good work. You called it. We and we still have a little bit of time. We could probably start working depending on, you know, if we want to refine these things, but we have two more and we're going to have uh, a good amount of time tomorrow as well. We've already had some of the styling. A lot of things has, have, have already been decided for, mm -hmm. uh, from a stylistic perspective. Yeah. So we can actually get, like you said, get started on the other screens that way we have a lot of time to prototype tomorrow which i i tend to find takes the longest so yes. it helps because we're gonna have the battle of the layers <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i can rename every layer <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the part that makes me sweat there's always like a 30 minute segment where it's just like all right ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have to deal with my typing inability so please <laughs> hold <laughs> brace for impact Exactly. But it's okay. You don't get any squiggly lines in Adobe XD, so we're in good hands. <laughs> exactly. Okay, awesome. Um, so what else did I have here? I had my comments. So if somebody were to click the comments icon right here, and it would open up a panel of comments. This, I have in mind making it similar to how TikTok does it. So it, it's almost like a, it's like a panel, but not really, cause it's not, you don't drag it. It's more like just something that opens up and then you can close it with like a close icon. So I think we're gonna do something similar to that as well. Man, this is 36. 
Okay, so oh. let me just delete these. I think you were going to try to trick us today. You're like, listen, we're only going to be able to do two of these today. But really, with the, how much time do we have realistically? We have about like 10 minutes. I really think you're going to be able to knock this, this, uh, you know, this third piece out fairly nicely. I feel like that's a challenge, like a speed design. <laughs> <laughs> and let the sweat begin. <laughs> you build this in 10 minutes. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, no, like what I was saying before, once this first slide is done for screen, all the others come so much, so much more faster. I don't know why. It's just it's like that. Yeah, because we have, you know, we made a lot of decisions already. We like the color palettes that we found some really good colors. You have kind of like the stylistic, uh, you know, how everything is spaced. You know, you have your headings, what those look like, your your H1s, H2s. Um, what your buttons are going to look like. You pretty much have everything. You've made all of the hard decisions. Now it's just, okay, well, now I need these elements for these new pages and uh, they just need to be in this style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no so pressure. We got 10 minutes, then we will wrap up and discuss what everybody is in store with uh, really for tomorrow. Yeah, and that sounds awesome. I'm just going to drag my record icon here also just to kind of make it clear that this is well this is technically not live but if we're assuming that it's live it would be here normally i'd want the same type of animation that we have on our profile page as well but i don't believe you can have two things either playing or animate at the same time to my knowledge unless there's yeah. been a change recently so yeah we're just going to keep this static then Or I wonder if it's the same. I thought it would, well, we can try. I think what you said is true, but I, for some reason, my mind, I mm -hmm. wasn't sure if it's video and Lottie, but um, I wonder if oh, they're maybe treated differently. Oh, right. Okay. Well, so let's not say right yet, because we're about to make me look really dumb if you say that. <laughs> really silly. In that case, let's, it's my hypothesis and my brain <laughs> told me maybe it's possible to have one Lottie and one video playing, but I do recall um, it is being worked on to be able to do multiple. Um, okay. Yeah, it's an inclination, guys. See, it's, it's <laughs> we think it might work, but it might not at the same time. Just to be on the safe side, this is what we yeah. think is the truth, but we are not totally sure. Yes. Okay. Okay, me. I think I want to extend this fully to our grid borders, and then I think this is sixteen and this is fourteen, but I want them to be the same size. So we're gonna make this fourteen, and then add one more textile, and this is gonna be for the time. Straight. She already took the dip in the water and posted five minutes ago. <laughs> oh yeah, this is our our user. <laughs> oh god. That was she's quick. A, she's efficient. Yep. Yeah. And she was levitating even better. <laughs> Quite literally. So before I add the other comments, I'm gonna add a box here. This is gonna be where somebody can write a comment. I'm gonna make, I think that is too light. I can barely see that. Okay. Make it slightly darker. Actually. Yeah. yeah, this is where organization is key. Like you don't even have to think about what gray, you already have the sliding scale, yeah. you know, what you have available. Yeah. The only thing to also just keep in mind is that you can add your assets here for colors specifically but then if you want them accessible here you have to like add them here as well so yeah. if anyone's noticed that i'm kind of just clicking it here and then adding it here too you have to do both if you want them accessible in both areas okay so here we're gonna say
type your comment. I think I'm gonna decrease the height of this. And decrease the width. And I'm gonna have a circle for our send icon and put that there. And then I think I might rotate this because I don't really get why it looks like this. I don't think I've ever seen a send icon that's diagonal, but maybe that's just me. I feel like I have, I don't know. Potentially, it is kind of unique. So let's role play really quick. Val has a really good question. Yeah. If you were designing what you're designing right now for a client, at what point would you have involved them for feedback? Oh, wireframes. <laughs> <laughs> from the get go. Yeah, no, definitely from wireframes. Like, I don't think I've ever, unless the client has essentially made it clear that they don't really care, jump straight into high fidelity. I've always started out with wireframes, sometimes starting out with sketches, even better. And it's easier the lower fidelity you start with, because if there are any big changes to make, it's so much easier to make it if you're if you're playing around with this. Let me just mm. turn grids. As opposed to if you have already something like this. This is a lot more detailed, which means you get a lot more criticism if the client doesn't like what it looks like. But with like simple blocks and shapes, it's just a lot more faster to get feedback and iterate. So yeah, I would say wireframes or sketches, low fidelity type stuff. Agreed. And not necessarily, not not. It just allows you when you start having conversations earlier, your client feels like they're a part of the project and it builds a relationship, trust. Uh, you want to do those things early because otherwise if they are, the client has to come find you. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Um, and that builds distrust. But if you are going and seeking them and saying, hey, this is where I'm at and make it a, collabor a collaborative effort and they feel like they're contributing to what they're actually paying you to build, um, you know, that helps build rapport. And um, it's always any time that they're coming to you to help them bring their vision to life. So the fact that, you know, you're, you're giving them time of, you're respecting their time being like, I know this is the exchange that we're doing here. I am building your vision uh, and uh, let's continue to work together to make that happen. And uh, just communicating back and forth with each step. But that's that's communication in general is just really important. We're, and sometimes it's not necessarily you're not really able to be like, all right, step one. I talked to client today because it's step one. Step two, I now talk to the client because it's step two. It, it's really all about feeling that out. Do you feel the, the same? Yeah, 100%. You kind of just have to be proactive sometimes. Because yeah. I've like, because I've been working freelance for a couple of months now and their clients are so different and you can't, the way you yeah. act with one can't be how you act with all of them. So if one client is like, they, they don't want to hear from you. They want to see the final product. And, you know, that's essentially when they want you to reach out. But someone else is a lot more involved in what you're doing. So you have to adapt depending on who the client is and what they're expecting from you. Very true. Okay. I think I'm just going to have our comments show up like that. And then have the gap be like 20. <laughs> I'll probably go, uh, let me lay them out and then I'll go back and change. Ooh, actually, I just remembered that I'll probably apply stacking to this. So stacking essentially means I just have to click onto one of these groups, assuming I group them and paste. Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, cause it's horizontally. One sec. Uh, 
group them and stack them and let's say i want it to be 20. that way when we click into any group and we command paste it'll automatically add it as a new row depending on what sizing we've applied so we said we want each row to be 20 pixels um apart so that's kind of how it's going to apply it and this is going to be really helpful because we are going to go back and obviously add custom text so all of our wonderful comments so we want to just make our lives easier by applying stacking let me add one more and then for this last one i am actually going to add And just a so quick reminder. Add, yeah, oh, go, go on. I was just giving a five minute heads up. So we can now put the final touch on. And then as we kind of move through the motions, we also want to let the audience know what we are in store for tomorrow. Cause some people might have just popped up, came halfway through. Um, but also for those who stuck with us to re-excite you about what we have in store for tomorrow. Yep, definitely. So right now I'm just adding the final touches to our comments slide. Um, make it we added like a white gradient. So it kind of looks like if you were to scroll more comments would appear out of here. And then as a final note, I think I'm just gonna showcase one more cool plugin that you've probably heard of before. I'm sure other designers have mentioned it in their live streams, user profile. And this is one that I use to, I think there's actually two versions. Yeah, there's user profile and UI faces. So either one, I think I mostly use user profile though. So essentially you can click onto a shape and replace that particular image with a photo of a random user. So if you're creating a social media app or any type of app where you do need access to just random photos of people smiling or essentially for avatars or users, this is a really great plugin that you can use for that. Ooh, wonderful. And while we're filling this in, this will be the last question of today. Then we'll have more questions tomorrow. But Cody Bear is asking, what is your favorite color to work with? Oh, that's such a good question. I love lavender, hence why there's lavender <laughs> <laughs> in our I design. Figured, yes, that was, that's <laughs> awesome. I was like, I wonder if it actually is the purple uh, or the lavender. I, I guess that was we're fighting words. It's not purple, it's lavender. There we go. We got to get it straight. Yes, lavender. Gotta respect the color. A hundred percent. That's my favorite color. <laughs> so lavender, Cody. There you go. Good question. <laughs> See, I told we we are literally three minutes in or left, and you did it. We have I all the comments. It. There's maybe some things that we could possibly do, but you have the majority of all the content there. That's true. I beat the clock. That's great. See, a little stress never hurt anybody. <laughs> Just, there's a little sweat here and there. Um, yeah. And so what are we doing tomorrow? What specifically yeah. do we, I know we have some Lottie animations for some of the reactions. We have some of the, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about what our goals that we want to complete for the entirety of the project for tomorrow. Yeah, so in terms of today, we've actually done quite a bit. So we did, we introduced the design focus. Um, we filled in typography on our style guide. We started working on the designs, almost done. And we've more or less decided on our colors. I'm pretty sure we're just going to stick with those. So in terms of day two outline, obviously completing the designs, like we just have one more screen left. So finishing up the comment screen and then the final screen, which is I think the explore page. Prototyping, so that's the next big step. We're gonna go in and start prototyping interactions between the different screens. Um, oh, okay. Fill in, I think these are just templates I took from the, the day one outline. So technically we only have to complete our designs and 
start prototyping and hopefully finish prototyping. Yes. I think we will. I mean, as fast as you were today, it's going to be awesome tomorrow. And with four, unless you're going to go like over the top, which is always, you know, you always do in a good way. <laughs> I'm excited to, to, to see what happens tomorrow with, you know, we already one step ahead than we thought mm -hmm. we were going to get with our, with our content. So ladies and gentlemen, um, we're very close to the end of our production here today. Um, Elsa, it's been amazing having you and just watching your process and seeing how efficiently and systemized you work. And I hope everybody else who's been watching us today, um, number one, goes follow Elsa and, uh, you know, checks out her work and gets even more excited coming back here tomorrow with any questions uh, that you guys want to uh, ask, whether it's about typography, literally go check her workout. It's crazy. There's a reason she's an Adobe XD ambassador. Um, so with that said, there's a lot to learn from her. And uh, Elsa, you know, what are any final words for us? Um, Besides the excitement for tomorrow, where can we find you? Yeah, um, uh, no, today was really fun. Had a great time. Thank you for all the questions. They were amazing. Super fun to answer. Obviously excited for tomorrow. If you do want to connect, I'm on all these social media platforms, in particular, Twitter and LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out. I'd love connecting with other designers, or other creatives in general. And I really hope that I get to see you tomorrow as well as we finish up our live video app. Beautiful. With that said, guys, uh, we will be here same time, same place tomorrow. Do not not show up. Obviously, it is a replay, but you know we'd love to have you guys here in the chat with us and uh, join along in our jokes. And by the way, you guys still have to name the app. So we're waiting. We're waiting for names all day long in the chat. So <laughs> y'all have some homework. Um, other than that, Elsa, we'll talk tomorrow. Uh, and thank you guys for joining us and uh, stick along for the Daily Creative Challenge up next. So with that said, Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Wow. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs>